Welcome to another quick video in which we're going to deconstruct the screen redraw of the original ST version of Lotus alongside the enhanced Lotus STE. Stay tuned for the end because we've got some surprising outcomes coming up. The first thing to render is the road. Lotus STE looks to be taking an early lead here. It's using the blitter to copy three bit planes from source data and setting a fourth bit plane to a solid value. The corresponding ST code is using quite a complex arrangement of self-modifying code and lookup tables to draw the road, which evidently comes with a degree of overhead. The sky is rendered by the CPU on both standard STE and STE versions, because solid blocks of colours are one of the few scenarios where the CPU has the edge on the blitter. Onto the mountains then, and the skew feature of the STE blitter is being used to position them at single pixel intervals. The corresponding ST code selects one from a selection of four mountain images pre-shifted to four pixel intervals, with a rather clever bit of code to wrap the image around when it reaches the far right. There's very little in it from a performance standpoint between the two approaches. The STE seems to pause for a moment there, maybe to service an interrupt. Without that pause I think it might have the edge. Next we move on to the drawing of the scenery and cars. Interestingly, these sprites typically have a greater pixel width on the STE version as a result of us positioning them horizontally at 1 pixel intervals. For example, a 32 pixel wide sprite shifted 1 pixel to the right becomes 48 pixels wide as that shifting 1 pixel to the right breaks us into a new block of 16 pixels. Let's see how that impacts performance. A slightly frustrating thing about using the blitter to draw sprites is that we perform four and passes to clear the background, and the blitter reads exactly the same source data on each of those passes. It would be nice if there was some way to read the source data once and apply that to all four and passes. The final thing to mention about the blitter is that we're having to use it in a way that doesn't affect timing critical things such as the music and the sky gradient. This means breaking down the rendering of each sprite into blitter calls that cover 1, 2, 4 or 8 lines at a time, depending upon the width of the sprite, with each blitter call having a startup overhead of 24 cycles. It's not ideal, but it's something we have to do. Now look at this. The original SD version has now finished rendering ahead of Lotus STE, possibly something we wouldn't have expected when we kicked off this process. In an attempt to mitigate some of the overhead of rendering cars and scenery using the blitter, we've optimised the code to render the status panel to the right. It's been optimised to reflect the fact that certain areas of the status panel only make use of selected bit planes. The blitter is particularly good at rendering only selected bit planes, and we're making use of that feature to make this faster than the original implementation. And with that, the Lotus SCE frame is now finished rendering. I imagine I'm not the only one who didn't expect this outcome. A couple of things to note then. Firstly, the DMA sound mixer is running in the background on the STE version and will be slowing down the rendering by between 4 and 6%. Secondly, it's interesting that although Lotus STE appears to have a slightly slower frame rate, many people who have played the game actually perceive it to be faster and smoother than the original. I'm not sure what conclusions we can draw from that, but it's an interesting observation. That's all for now. Please like, subscribe and leave comments if you enjoyed this content.